guys see this? Yeah, you can see this board, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, so we're going to start really easy. We're going to start with the simple syrup for the tiramisu. Okay, so that's um, you need you need the uh, you need your sugar, your water, your espresso, and whatever kind of liquor you're going to use. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my espresso on. You're going to make a simple syrup. You should really print these out. Sorry, it's not plugged in. All right, so you're just going to take equal parts of sugar and water. Okay, so I actually, depending on what size recipe you're going to use, I used a double amount because you're going to use a little bit more of the syrup than you think you are because the um, lady fingers absorb a lot. So we're just going to take that and put that on medium low heat, stir it up and wait for the sugar to dissolve, okay? So that'll take a few minutes, and then we'll take it off the heat and we'll add the espresso and the liquor to it once it cools off. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, the next thing we're gonna do Everybody with me? Yes. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the stuff together for our canola cells because they have to go into the refrigerator. So the dough does. So first thing we're gonna do is separate our eggs. I know this is crazy because this calls for half an egg. So the rule of thumb with an egg is an average egg weighs two ounces, a large egg weighs two ounces. An ounce for the yolk and an ounce for the white. So we can go ahead and let's see what this calls for. I know it calls for one and a half tablespoons of egg yolk and three quarters of a tablespoon of whole egg. So I'm just gonna mix those together and use two tablespoons because it's not gonna hurt anything to be honest with you. So that's the yolk and the whole egg together. They're ready to go. I'm going to do this in a food processor, only because I think it's easier. Um, you can do it however you like. If you want to do it in a bowl, it's kind of a pain in the rear to do it with a mixer. So I'm going to turn it this way just so that you can see the food processor for a minute. I don't have room for all that stuff in one spot. Okay. My espresso almost overflowed. Okay. So I'm going to take this over here. You have, I have, I have my flour. Okay. All purpose flour. I have um, Crisco, cinnamon, sugar, vinegar, water, and Marsala. Okay. So we're just going to toss those all into the food processor. The yes, egg, uh, two tablespoons of egg. The orange. The orange. Uh -huh. See? Yeah. She has a line. Uh -huh. It comes for a pinch of salt. I already put that in with my flour. I'm going to throw the shortening in and mix it before I add the liquid. Okay. Okay. Um, just like you would a pie crust just to get it mixed a little. What, uh, what, what part are you working on right now? We're, we're, we're behind. The cannoli shells. The cannoli shells, okay. Okay, so you can do them in a bowl and use your fingers or, um, or you can do them in a mixer. I just do them in a food processor because it's easier. Okay. 
Everybody, I'll, I'll, if I'm going too fast, that's exactly what you should do. Yell for me, okay? All right, let me grab a tablespoon. I can find one. Where's my tablespoon? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add the Marsala wine. Okay, so now with cannoli shells, you know how a cannoli shell has bubbles in it? It's the white vinegar that gives it the, the bubbles in the end. That's what causes the, the reaction to the acid is what makes it bubbly. The water and the vinegar. And then two tablespoons of egg. And hang on to that egg because I think as we go forward, there's another recipe that calls for just a couple tablespoons of eggs. The egg whites, you need to, to um, hold your egg, your cannoli shells together. So just put that aside. Okay, now that's not coming together for me. So I'm going to go ahead and add a tiny bit more of water. A little dry. There we go. So you want it to come together like it does. Oops. All right, so my sugar all melted. I'm gonna take it off the heat actually boiling. All right, so let's come back here. So now you can see what's going on a little better. All right. So this is the dough. Now it might even be a little damp. Okay, we're just going to Knead it a little bit to make sure it all comes together. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it in plastic or in a plastic bag and throw it in the refrigerator, okay? Okay, we're almost caught up to you here. We're uh, mixing the dough in the bowl right now. Okay, take your time. Yeah, same here. I'm a little behind. My dough was really I'll, late. I will slow yeah. down. How's that? I'm behind. Yeah, I'm behind. I cheated. The food processor moves faster than your hands or your bowl is going to work. I'm going to toss that in the fridge. So while you're doing that, I'll talk to you about some of the changes on these recipes. Or maybe I won't because it's too hard to pay attention. So let me know when you're all caught up.
Okay, so if you look through, or if you did look through your recipes, the cannoli recipe and the tiramisu recipe call, both call for heavy cream, okay? But they don't tell you, the recipes don't tell you that the heavy cream doesn't just go in. You have to whip it before you put it in. So we're gonna whip our heavy cream right now and get it over with so that we have it to go ahead and move forward with both of our recipes, okay? So, the handy little trick for whipping cream is to take your, your bowl, your mixing bowl, and your beater and make sure they're clean and then throw them in either the refrigerator or the freezer, okay? I just leave them in there when I know I'm going to use them. So, total you probably need about three quarters of a cup of I would use how much, you know, through, I would use, if you bought a whole cup of whipping cream, I would use the whole cup. Okay. I am going to actually use two cups of whipping cream just so we have enough. Uh, so I have enough. And because some of this is going to get used for our topping on our tiramisu, I'm also going to throw a tablespoon or two of powdered sugar in here. When you use whipping cream, you should always use confectioner sugar as opposed to white sugar because it dissolves better. Oops. And that'll just give it a little bit of taste. It's not going to change our recipes at all. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put that in the mixer. Turn it on low to get it mixed a little bit and then turn it up. In the meantime, guys, while that's whipping, you can set your double broiler up for your um, for your um, for the filling for your tiramisu. Okay, so just take a little bit of water and put it in a pan and turn it on to medium low, between low and medium, so it gets a little bit of a simmer, but it's not boiling. Okay. Give us one second to find where you are. What? Somebody what? asked a question. That's me. Uh, what, what, what are we doing now? Whipping cream. Yeah, we did the whipping cream. Okay, so get it all the way whipped and set up your double broiler. Okay. How'd you get whipping cream done so fast? Mine's not even done yet. How thick should the filling be? Should it be pretty thick or? What, your whipping cream, you want it to hold a piece? No, 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 no. the uh, zabuglione. The zabuglione is yeah. really thick. It's gonna be, yeah, you want it to get it to the point before it, um, before it actually turns to custard. Okay, thanks. Okay.
So I'm just going to throw this whipping cream in another bowl so that I can use this mixing bowl again if I need to without having to wash it. Okay, so what we're going to do while we ha I have this whipping cream in here is we're going to mix the cannoli filling because that doesn't get hot. Okay, that's not a hot filling. So I'm going to throw this in the fridge for the time being. This is the more, this is the yellow. So the cannoli filling is uber easy. What I do want to tell you about the cannoli filling is though, so your recipe calls for six ounces of white sugar, okay? And you can use the six ounces of white sugar, but here again, powdered sugar works better. So if you want to use the powdered sugar, I, if you're going to use powdered sugar, it calls for six ounces of white sugar. That would be the equivalent to a cup and a half of powdered sugar, okay? Now, this is a really good um, really good cannoli filling recipe. It really is. One of my favorites. I've tried a bunch of them. Knife to open this up. Okay, so you want your um, mascarpone to be room temperature. You need eight ounces. So I'm just going to toss it in the bowl we just used. Because we're going to add whipping cream to that anyway. I usually, now if by chance, I know a lot of people use regatta for their um, cannoli filling. If you're going to use regatta, you should drain it and dry it in a, in a cloth. You can also, if you don't have mascarpone, you can take cream cheese and add about three ounces of sour cream to it and whip it and you'll get the same thing. Okay, so because I'm using powdered sugar, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to sift it in. Doesn't want to work. Um, could you? Uh, so after after I set up the double broiler and um, we whipped up the cream, what what's the next thing you're working on there? The cannoli filling. The cannoli filling. The filling, yeah. So it's just mascarpone, lime zest, orange zest. We're gonna use whipped cream, okay? That's, that's what actually goes into it. Okay, so. And if you're just using regular white sugar, you don't have to go through all this. So you're going to use a paddle attachment on your mixer. But first, we're going to grate about 
half of a line zest, half of a lot, the zest of a half a line. This is what really makes this taste so good is the lime and the orange. Smells good, doesn't it? And about a half an orange, a medium sized orange anyway. Okay. We're just going to put those paddle things. And the paddle attachment and all in the mixer bowl. Yeah, just the paddle attachment and what's in the mixer now. We'll, we will fold the heavy cream in, okay? Okay. Yeah, I just want to get it to a nice smooth consistency. Scrape the bowl down. So no lumps, that's what you're looking for, just no lumps. And then you're gonna take Okay, so 10 tablespoons, I think that's the funniest thing ever. 10 tablespoons is a half a cup and two, and two tablespoons, okay? Four tablespoons is a quarter of a cup, so you know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a complete, we're gonna take a cup, one cup of whipped cream and fold it in, all right? And you're just going to fold it in nice and gently so you don't lose the air. Throw your whipping cream back in the fridge. Okay, and just fold it in nice and gently. And it smells like heaven. And you should have a nice, consistent filling. Just make sure. I'm so sorry, I got behind. The, Go the, the 10 ounces of heavy cream, we're folding it in. Okay, it's, did you already whip it? Yes. Okay, so you put a whole cup of cream in. A whole okay. Cup of whipped cream, okay? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and you're just, we're just folding it in at this point.
Now, what I do, uh, we're going to refrigerate this, but I'm going to refrigerate it in the pastry bag instead of refrigerating it in the bowl. It'll get cooler faster. Okay. Oh my God, it smells so good. Now you'll see, I'll show you in a minute. I'm just gonna push it down, twist it and throw it in the refrigerator. Right after I taste it. I'm going to go ahead and leave that in the refrigerator till we're ready to use it. Everybody, I'll wait for everybody to catch up. In the meantime, you'll notice that I have a second double broiler on my stove. And that's just basically, this recipe calls, your cannoli recipe calls for mini chocolate chips. Um, they go on the ends of the cannoli you dip the ends in, but we're going to, I'm also going to dip our cannoli shells in chocolate. So I actually have chocolate ready to just melt and I just turn the water on, let it get hot. Oh, I need more hot water in here. And uh, then I turned it off and I'm just going to let it sit over that hot water. Okay. All right. So your sugar, while you're, I'm just going to talk to you while you're doing that. Let me know when you're caught up. Your um, simple syrup should be cool enough now. You never want to add alcohol to anything hot because it, it just, the alcohol just burns off. So I'm going to go ahead and add the espresso to that. And I'm using brandy. I'm using, um, what am I using? Oh, Bailey's Irish cream. I couldn't figure out. I don't have any brandy. So I just threw some Bailey's Irish cream in there and I'm just gonna put that aside. Right. Oh, it smells good. Yum. Okay, that's what we're gonna dip our um, lady fingers in later, okay? Let me know when you're ready to move on. You guys ready? Almost. Okay, I'll let everybody get caught up. What are we doing next? That, they, we're going to do the filling for the um, tiramisu next, okay? So what we need is, um, you need a bowl to go over your, um, to go over your double broiler. You need your sugar, your Marcella wine. Okay, now you're, we're only going to use an egg yolk. So, I'm making a really small, small portion of tiramisu. If you want to make the double size, you'll need two egg yolks. 
So I'm just going to take the yolk and put it in that bowl for the double broiler. Okay. I kept that white. I'm going to take the sugar, add that, and the marsala. Okay. They all go in one bowl. And then we're just going to take a whisk and whisk them together. And we're going to throw that over the double broiler. Okay. So I'm going to turn this back on because I turned it off. Now we don't want that to be boiling hard. We want it to be simmering, but not boiling hard, okay? And as you whisk it, you'll notice it's getting real bubbly. It'll start to get pretty frothy as you're getting closer to the end. It's gonna hold its form. It's not gonna, not like whipped cream, but it's going to almost like a ribbon. So you wanna be careful, you keep moving it so the egg doesn't cook. So if you have two sets of hands in the kitchen, which I, some of you do, one of you might want to wash a mixing bowl because you're going to need it. Now you can't see this. So it's getting that, it's really pale yellow now and you just want to keep moving it. So this just apple yen by itself is so good over strawberries in the summer. It has this really wonderful, not real sweet taste to it. And by, you can even lighten it up by adding some whipping cream to it without sugar. We're starting to get there. Thanks. So it doubles in volume, and then it starts to settle. And as the bubbles dissipate, It'll get thicker.
My water's not hot enough. I wonder why. I gotta bring this up to temperature real fast. How, how do we know when we're done whisking the uh, water? It'll hold, it'll hold the shape of the whisk, okay? So when you go back and forth, you'll be able to see the whisk dragging through it. I'm taking a little longer because as it turns out, my water wasn't hot enough. It starts to get a little thicker. You'll notice it. You'll be getting a little more volume. You know, be bubbling up a little more. Take as long as mine is. So you should have by now doubled in volume. Okay. So look, it doubles in volume. Let's just sit this aside to cool off for a couple of minutes, okay? I'm gonna get another mixing bowl. So now you're gonna take your six ounces of mascarpone. And this should be room temperature as well. I wrap this really well. I'm gonna throw it in my mixer. Actually, I don't know if I am. Let's see. It's real. I, this is really soft. I may not have to, but I'm going to anyway. So I'm gonna throw it in my mixer. And I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit, okay?
Okay, so we're gonna let our Zaboyan cool off for a few minutes before we put it in there, okay? And then we'll mix our heavy cream in them once that cools off, all right? Yeah, the magic of television, if you, were, oh man, if you were doing television, is that there's somebody to clean up after you. Okay. Everybody smooth out there, Marscapone? Yeah. So a couple more minutes to let that cool down. We don't want to, it should, okay, so there. As it cools, you'll notice that it'll hold its shape better, see? So we'll give it another minute, minute or so, and then we'll add it to our mascarpone. use the other burner to fry because that one doesn't want to work. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to scrape that all the way to the bottom and we're going to fold the zabouillon in nice and lightly, okay? And we'll fold it so that we can keep some of that air and the integrity of the air that we put in there. We're gonna add some whipping cream, so that will help. I'm actually gonna put this in. Hi. Sorry guys. Apparently my neighbor's dog is out. Hey. That was a little bit lumpy, so I just smoothed it out with a whisk. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add just about another cup, not quite a whole cup of whipping cream. Maybe about three quarters of a cup. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to fold it in. So this is a little thinner than our, um, than our cannoli filling was, but this doesn't have to have a stiff peak. Remember, this is filling. So, I mean, this is gonna go flat into a dish. All right, so I'm gonna put this in a smaller bowl and put it in the fridge. And let this stiffen up a little bit, okay? 
So now we have all the components for our, our cannoli filling is filled, is done. And our dough is resting. Our tiramisu, this is our filling. This will be our topping for our tiramisu. Our simple syrup is ready. So we have all the components of most of our, so now let me put this stuff back in the fridge. We're gonna go ahead do our cookies for this guy. Okay, we're just gonna need uh, one more minute to uh, finish up this last part. Go ahead, I'm not going anywhere, you take your time. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So you're going to need a mixing bowl for your, which is why I just washed mine. This is a really versatile, when you're all caught up, I'm just going to talk. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to myself, but that's okay. I do that anyway. Um, this biscotti, this chocolate biscotti recipe is really versatile. You can add whatever you want to, to it. So no one in my family eats, likes nuts in their cookies. So I put chocolate, miniature chocolate chips in instead. So you can add whatever you want to. They do like macadamia nuts. So you could always put those in. Um, like I said, this is a really versatile biscotti recipe. Okay. I need right. this over here. We're ready for the uh, biscotti when you are. Okay, here we go. Everybody else ready? Yep. Okay. So yep. This is another reason why that chocolate, that melted chocolate is really good because we can dip the ends or drizzle these biscotti when they're all finished. Now this is a no moss, no fuss recipe, okay? Flour. Two tablespoons of cocoa, baking powder. I love cinnamon and chocolate together, so I put a little more cinnamon in than the recipe calls for. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so break one egg, okay? And then take two tablespoons from those eggs that I told you to put aside. If you still have them, put two tablespoons of that in with this. So that'll give you one and a half eggs. Okay. You can plop that all into the bowl together. Vanilla. Together. a little bit more egg to this because this is very dry. Mine is. I don't know if yours is. Mine is. Else is dry. Is your dad? No, okay. Yes, no? No. Okay. I'm, I'm getting there while we're poor back. Yeah, mine seems a little dry. Okay, so add, I took that other egg. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more of it because mine is dry. It's not coming together. So I would add, instead of that being one, uh, one and a half eggs in that recipe, I'd make it two eggs. So now it's coming right together. So now you can add your cherries and your nuts in, okay? I'm adding chocolate chips and cherries. Just fold those in. Two sisters. Okay, so that does feels a little bit sticky, but that's how you want it to feel, okay? We're gonna take a sheet pan. Oh my good Lord, I did not put the sugar in my cookies. How about that? See, I'm not paying enough attention. Well, that was genius. How did I miss that? That ought to be interesting. Should the cherries be cut up or should you leave them whole? What? Should the cherries be cut or should you leave them whole? The dry little cherries you can leave whole. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Now I have to add a little tiny bit more flour. Okay, 
So we're going to take a sheet pan and throw a sheet of um, parchment on it. All right, now I'm going to take a cutting board and I'm going to throw a little bit of flour and a little bit of cocoa powder on it. Okay. I ended up using two eggs and my dough is still like a little dry, but, but I think it's okay, like sticky. Okay. You, if you think it's too dry, you could actually put a, just a drop of water in. I'm just gonna mix the cocoa powder and the flour together and make a mess. Okay. Okay. And you're just going to take it, try to form a log like that, and you're going to rub, roll it in the cocoa powder. Okay. Like so. When you're rolling it, roll from the middle. Okay, so it's even. Want it to be about two to two and a half inches wide, so that should be about right there, okay? So I'm gonna grab my sheet pan. I hope that I don't break this. Yes, I did not, but close. And I'm just gonna pat it down a little bit so it's a little flat on the top, not real flat, but a little. Okay, and we're going to pop that in the oven. Um, could you help us out with the uh, consistency of the dough here? Or is this real sticky and runny? Okay, so add a little bit of flour to it. Okay. Okay. And you can do it with your hands if you want, you know, if you don't want to put it back in the mixer. Okay. So mine was a little bit soft, but not runny. So if yours is still runny, just add, maybe add a half a cup of flour and work it in and see. Okay. Okay. All right. And when you roll it in the flour, that'll also help bring it together a little bit, okay? Fifty. Yeah, three fifty. We're gonna go. We're gonna set. When you're all ready, we'll set the oven for twenty minutes, and then we'll turn the tray. Okay. See how they look. I'm gonna get this off of here. Okay. Let me know. How's your dough looking over there, guys? Any better? Good. A little bit. A little mm -hmm. bit. Let's see. Okay. It's your hands in it, so like oh, still too runny. Okay, put another wait, listen, put another half a cup of flour in, but put a tablespoon of cocoa powder in too, mix them together. Okay, otherwise, you're going to lose the chocolate flavor, right? 
I'm going to go ahead and um, keep watching for you guys, but I'm going to throw this in the oven for 20 minutes. Wow, I made a mess. Let me know when we're all in the oven. I got toe that powder everywhere. Lose someone? No. No, no, no. That's just my beeping. Okay. I'm good. All righty. Okay. I want to make sure everybody's in the oven before I start because then we're going to put the tiramisu together next. Okay. Yep. I'm in the oven. Thank you. Okay. We're good. and making a pathetic small tiramisu because after the holidays having anything too sweet around the house is not a good idea. That's the advantage of being at the school is I don't eat any of it. It doesn't stay around my house. Everybody gets to take it home. So if you pick the big, the larger amount of tiramisu, this would be the size of a pan you're looking for, like an eight by eight, okay? But because I'm doing the little one, I just am gonna put it in a Pyrex bread dish. But before I start any of that, I'm gonna figure out what size my cookies have to be. And we're going to do this just the same way you do lasagna. The bottom row going one way. How are you up there with your cookies? You all right with your cookies? Yeah, we're uh, we're almost uh, ready to get it on the tray here. Okay, go ahead. Oh, look. They fit perfectly in them, just a tiny bit. That way, yeah. This way. 
I'll have to cut them. So going this way, I'm gonna need. So you wanna do all this before we start soaking the lady fingers, because you wanna do them while you're dry. So go ahead, I'm just putzing around waiting for you guys to catch up. What's, uh, how long do we put it in the oven? I have 20 minutes. 20, okay. And then we're gonna turn it, okay? Uh, for the for the larger portion of the tiramisu, is the uh -huh. is a two quart container? That's perfect. That's exactly the size you want. Okay, so just figure out how you're going to get your cookies in the in each row. First okay. one one way, second one the other way. Okay. Okay. Then we'll take them out and we'll soak them. Okay. I should be able to get one more row in there. Take those back out of there. All right. So first thing we need is our simple syrup. Okay. And then let's grab our filling out of the fridge. I'm just going to divide that in what looks like half with a spatula so I know how much will go on each layer. And then I am not a lover of cocoa powder. You can use cocoa powder if you would, if you have it. I'm going to use chocolate between my layers. We're going to grate chocolate. If you're using cocoa powder, use a sieve, a sieve to put it on. Okay. All right. So this is my bottom layer. Yes. So I'm just going to soak these. Make sure that they're wet enough that they're going to absorb, but not so wet that they're going to fall apart. Okay. Sugar side up. But the filling will soften them up more when you yeah. leave it, right? Okay. Yes. All right. But a lot of times, if you don't get them wet enough, then it, it's almost still crunchy. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Which is not a bad thing because it's nice for the texture, but it... This will go to my daughter-in-law tomorrow. It's her favorite. You can all, I can always use a couple of suck-up points with a daughter-in-law, huh? <laughs> Okay, so after the first row, 
I'm going to take half of the filling. When you um, when you dip them in to soak them, do you uh -huh. do you do both sides or one or? I just you know what I dip them. I hold them from one side and dip them all the way under, but I don't roll them. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay, so we're just going to even that out a little bit. So let's do the first filling. Always, it's easier to do in a bigger container. Okay, and then you're either going to take your cocoa powder or your chocolate. Okay, we need the filling from the fridge. Is that what that is? Yeah, I think this is the tiramisu filling. This is sweet dark chocolate. Sometimes I just use a Hershey bar if I have a Hershey bar in hand, you know? Put some of that in. Cookies smell good. Does smell good, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, get the cocoa in the sifter. Okay, and then we're gonna go the other way, just like lasagna in opposite directions. So when you cut it, it doesn't fall apart. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we screwed up here. This is like too short. Like to drink this espresso with the uh, right, so eggs in it. You probably use a little of that right about now. Okay, so we, we don't want to be that thick. That was a mistake. Ooh. Okay, um, I can't put too much on. All right, is this the next row? Yes. And it goes this way, right? Yes. Okay. Dad, are you a baker normally? Are you talking to me? Uh-huh, you're the only dad. Uh... Or aren't you? I uh, I do okay. Oh, see, I'm impressed. My daughter's the one that's really interested in the uh, the baking. We do um, life ever returns to normal. We do um, baking camps through the summer. Um, how much of the filling should be in there? Half. Um, but like between each layer. So half on the first layer and half on the second. We didn't put them on. All right, we're gonna have to fix that. Okay, go ahead, I'm not going anywhere. All right. Can you smell your cookies yet? Wait, I gotta check, make sure they don't burn. If it makes anybody feel better, I'm just gonna level up that I couldn't find lady fingers, so I use Nilla wafers instead. I'm a bad Italian. Go for it. You know what? The only place, if you're looking for um, lady fingers locally, if you're local, the only place I've ever found them besides, um, in a like down in the strip, is the market district has them. But like regular giant eagles don't carry them. So you're right. They're hard to find. Okay. You try them by the case. I couldn't find them either. So I, I bought an angel food cake. Oh, there you have it. I like that. I you know what else I sometimes... <laughs> You can make um, a tiramisu truff, uh, trifle with cake, you know, with like a, you said angel food. I used to do it with chocolate cake because my son liked that. Um, but they are, you know, you could also get really crazy and make your own.
My dad looks a little shaky. Okay. So I'm going to throw some more chocolate on here. Does anybody have any whipped cream left? I did. Yep. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to throw some whipped cream on the top. If you wanted, could you put those mini chocolate chips on top? You could. Okay. I think I'm going to do that. Listen, once you get the, the filling made, it's all on you because that's the only part that really requires any science. Classic tiramisu is not overly sweet, which is why they use cocoa powder. Because cocoa powder is not sweet. But I'm not a big fan. Even the um, really expensive cocoa powder doesn't do it for me. Okay. So... I have some whipped cream left. Put it in a pastry bag. Now authentic tiramisu does not have a topping on it. If you can decorate it out with, um, Whatever with whipping cream if you want, but authentic tiramisu does not really. But you know, we're winging it, so I'm going to put this whipped cream on here so that I don't waste it. I guess I should. And however you want to do it, if you want to put the whipped cream on top, I'm just going to, told you, I'm going for sock up points here. Oh, only a minute left. The nice thing about the filling for the tiramisu is you can do it a, like a day ahead, not much more than a day, but you could do it a day and ahead and put it together after the fact. Okay. Even at that, I didn't use all my whipped cream. Okay. A little more chocolate because why not? And into the refrigerator. Now, I would not recommend that you cut this for at least two or three hours. Let it set up. Okay. Everybody caught up? Yes, no? Let me know when you're ready. I get a mess to clean up anyway. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, one quick question. So you put the, <clears throat> the filling on top and then you put whipped cream and then the chocolate. Yes. Okay, got ya.
Let's get this out of the way. So that's 20 minutes if you put your cookies in right around the same time I did. I'm going to look at those and turn them. Ooh, something's not right with my dough. That's okay. Should we cover the tiramisu before putting it in the refrigerator? No, let it set up before you cover it. Okay. No. Then give, yeah, give it a couple of hours and then cover it so it doesn't get the taste of the refrigerator. So let's do um, eight more minutes on the biscotti. Okay. Next up is the cannoli shells. Yes, ma'am. So your recipe, your instructions call for a pasta maker. And that's one way to do it. We're gonna, I'm gonna roll mine out, but you can go ahead and use the pasta maker if you like. Um, I always, oh geez, what did I do with my cookie cutter? Wait a minute. I always make a horrible mess with the pasta maker. my chocolate and then I'm going to put it right back on that warm water if you put plat when you melt chocolate like candy chocolate or any kind of chocolate if you put plastic over the top of it while it's melting it'll melt faster um, just because the steam will help it melt okay and then I'm going to put my oil on to get Hot slowly. All right. Does everyone have cannoli shells? I mean, cannoli forms. Okay. I wish I could tell you how to make them with tin foil. I've not figured that little predicament out. Though I will tell you <laughs> that the best thing to do is to buy them. This is really fun one time. But, you know, it's way easier to just buy the cannoli shells. I'm going to make muffins. I'm going to bake them. I'm going to bake little rounds of the dough in, in a muffin tin. In a muffin tin? Okay. So we'll how they'll bake, but give it a shot. Okay. Well, hmm? You could fry them and then put them in the muffin tin and see if they'll stiffen up that way. Um. All right, so this is not my, um, this is not my favorite, I'll be honest. I say this every time I teach this class. When we teach this class at the school, it also, we also do a lemon chowder tartlet. We do regatta cookies. I'm trying to think of, there's something else we do. 
So I don't want to heat this oil too fast. It's going to take a little while to build our shells. All right, I'm going to use wax paper. There's my marbles. So we're going to still need a little tiny bit of flour with this. Oh. Let me grab a little tiny bit. So these are full size. So I'm gonna use a six inch cutter. Use what you have and we'll roll it out thinner if you have to. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on this wax paper, just so nothing sticks. And if you're using a pasta maker, cut it in half just once. I'm going to use, I'm rolling this out, so I'm going to cut it in quarters. Okay. So I'm also going to put a piece of wax paper on the top. To roll it out, which is exactly how I roll out pie dough. So, ah, the top is sticking then. Yeah. All right, let's see. Maybe I should have opted into the pasta maker tonight. I'm not having the best night with this kind of stuff. So this is my day. This is my favorite rolling pin. I know it looks crazy, but it's my absolute favorite for stuff like this. So I want to get this big enough to probably get two of them out of here. Maybe. If you're using, okay, let me take those cookies out of the oven. Okay, so mine look kind of crazy, but I know that that's because I added the sugar last. So I have this pan on top. Okay, so we want to let them sit for at least 10 minutes before we cut them. Okay, so I am going to pull the parchment off of the tray because the tray will hold the heat and just put the parchment on the cooling rack. Okay. Let's see here. 
Now, one of the things that will happen when you cut these is this, they will shrink, okay? Not a lot, but they will shrink. Because I like you guys, I'm going to make six. Maybe. I don't know if I like you that much. Okay. I'm going to put these on a plate. Actually, what I'll do is I'll roll them and put them on a plate. Okay, so on the form, you're just gonna take it and you're not gonna wrap it too tight and you're gonna wrap it around. On the other side, on the inside, you're gonna put just a little bit of egg white to hold it on, but you don't want them real tight or you won't be able to get them off. My grandma used to make this look so easy. On Sunday, she would do this and it was like, no big deal. Okay. How's it going? Anybody rolling? Yeah, it's good. Okay. So I'm still rolling the first one. Did you say to divide the dough into four? And uh, that's what I did. I divided it into four, and on the first one, I got two out of it. So okay. So we maybe we'll get eight out of it. But mine don't seem like I'm gonna get two out of it. But I'll try. And you're just wrapping them. You didn't put them in the oil yet, right? No, 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 no. Uh, my oils. The our oil's not gonna be hot enough yet. Okay. Here's the thing with, with these cannolis. The oil has to be the right temperature or they'll get so greasy they won't work. You know? Which anytime you fry anything, that's the case. Let me put a little bit more flour in here. Actually, if you work this dough all the way through and rework the dough that you're, that's, you're not cutting off at first, you probably would end up with 10 to 12 cannoli. These cannoli forms, I sent for them on Amazon. I honestly believe they cost me like five or six bucks. And my favorite part about them is some cannoli uh, forms are solid. These ones ha have, you could, they, when you take them off, they slide. I mean, they, they expand and contract so they're easier to get off and on.
And again, like I told you, the bubbles and cannoli shells comes all from the, the, um, the vinegar mixing with the baking soda, the baking powder, and that's what makes the bubbles. And the wine or the vermouth, as the case might be. All right, that's it. It's back in the fridge. I'll get industrious tomorrow and roll out the rest. I'm going to check the temperature on the oil. What kind of thermometer do you check the temperature with? I just have um, a meat thermometer. Oh, you won't be able to check it with the meat thermometer. I use a candy thermometer. Um, okay. Take a little bit of flour and throw it in and see if it comes right back up. That should give you an idea what your temperature is. That's usually about the right temperature, but let's see how long. Smells like oil. My oil is at 310 degrees. So I'm actually gonna turn it down a tiny bit. 300 is perfect. All right, I'm gonna take a sheet pan and put a um, paper towel on it. The bread is over here. The pair of tongs. Dish towel. The dry one actually. Okay. So they're going to brown pretty fast.
I'm only putting two in at a time because I don't want to drop the temperature too fast. You want them to get a little more than golden brown. Yeah. See the bubbles? Are you getting bubbles? I'll show you the bubbles in a minute. Normally I would put more oil in here than this, but for six of them, I don't want to use too much oil. So see the bubbles? So you get these big bubbles in there. Don't you hide. Come on, Cochran. All right. How long should it stay in the oil? Just until it gets a really nice brown color. You don't want them to let them get too cold on there because they'll be hard to take off. Yeah, they come off a lot easier when they're hot. You just have to be really careful. Okay, we're gonna let them cool off for a minute and then we're gonna dip them in chocolate. Um, 
and raw. In the meantime, I move my biscotti to a cutting board and I'm gonna cover another cookie sheet with parchment so we can put them on to rebake them. Now, I'm a big believer in everybody has different tastes when it comes to biscotti. <clears throat> Some people like theirs really dry so that they're really crunchy and you'd have to dump them in coffee to make them work. I am not of that opinion. I kind of like mine soft. So you can decide we're gonna, when we put them in the back in the oven, how long you want them to be in there. Okay, so I'm just going to take the ends and dip them in chocolate just because they look pretty. Let this set up before we fill them. And then once we fill them, we'll hit them with powdered sugar and they'll be a thing of beauty. Okay, I'm going to put this back on the stove so that we can use it for our, um, whoops, keep it warm, so we can use it for our biscottis if we want to. Get this out of here. out of the way and let them get cold while we cut our biscotti. So my biscotti doesn't look very good, but I, like I said, I know why. Best to cut these with a serrated knife, okay? Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. So I'm gonna cut them on a, the bias, okay? I think I may have other chocolate chip these too. You can never have too much chocolate. Okay. Yeah, mine are falling apart. Not good. Okay. So you want them to be about an inch, maybe a little less. You're just going to place them on their sides.
How'd your cookies come out so far? Were they cut? They're okay. a little like brownie y, but like they'll, I think they'll crisp up well with the second. Yeah, day. they will. And if, yeah, is it, is it sticking to your knife or can your knife go through them? Um, my knife went through them pretty okay. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah, they'll finish baking the second time around. My, I, like I said, I think I may have over chocolate chipped, but you know, oh well. I don't know how, I just, I baked so many biscotti for Christmas. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna pop these into the oven for about five minutes, and then we'll take a look and turn them over, okay? What did I do with my... Okay, so I put these on my sun porch and they got nice and cold and the chocolate set. So, let's see him. So I'm just, whoops, let me put my glasses on so you can see what I'm doing. So I just have a round tip in here. So we could have done however many you did. I only did six. You could, we probably could have done 10 and had plenty of filling for that. I'm going to hit those with some. And there you have it. Cannoli. Pretty nice, huh? Not so bad. I'm giving you guys big props. Look at this. You got cannoli, biscotti, and tiramisu in two hours and 10 minutes.